Hi, today we'll learn honorific particles. We'll start off with she and ushi. This particle is unique and it doesn't exist in most world languages. It is attached to a verb or an adjective to show your respect to a person you are talking about. Many students get confused about honorific particle she, ushi and polite formal sentence endings nida and sumnida. So I want to clarify for you. The particle she and ushi are used to show respect to a person you are talking about, whereas nida and sumnida are used to show respect to a person you are talking to. Say you are talking to a professor about your grandparents. So in this situation, you need to use both nida and sumnida to show your respect to the professor you are talking to right now. And you also need to use she or she to show that you also respect your grandparents. But what if you are talking about your grandparents with a friend? Then you shouldn't use the polite formal sentence ending nida and sumnida. Instead, use informal sentence ending. But you still have to use she because you are talking about your grandparents. Let's take a look at a few examples. My grandfather is reading a book. 제 할아버지께서 책을 읽으십니다. If you don't remember, 께서 is a polite version of the nominative case particles 이가. So instead of simply saying 읽습니다, we need to say 읽으십니다. Because grandfather is much older and we need to show him respect. Chairman Kim is going to China. Kim 회장님이 중국에 가십니다. Here, no matter how old the chairman Kim is, he can be even younger than you, but since he has a high position in the company you work for, you must show respect. You might have already noticed that if a verb or an adjective stem ends with a consonant, you need to use 의시, 읽다, 읽으십니다. And if it ends with a vowel, use 시, 가다, 가십니다. Let's learn how to conjugate verbs with these honorific particles in the past and in the future tenses. The honorific particle is attached directly to a verb or an adjective stem right before the past and future tense suffixes. And as you might have already noticed it or not, because of such particles order, where absolutely any verb now ends with the same syllable she, 읽으시, 가시, you don't need to think about which one of these three past tense suffixes at, ot, or yot you need to use because now 읽으시 and 가시 are kinda pseudo verb stems and as we already know, when a verb or an adjective stem ends with the vowel e, we need to use the suffix yot in the past tense. So you need to use yod for any type of verb as long as there is the honorific particle she. And here's the proof. In normal situations where you don't need to show your respect to a person you are talking about, you would have to think which of these three past tense suffixes you need to use. But if you use the honorific particle she, then the conjugation becomes a lot easier. For better understanding of today's learning material, let's compare sentences on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side. My grandfather is reading a book and my sister is reading a book. Chairman Kim is going to China and my friend is going to China. Here we are talking about someone who is older or has a high position in the society. And here we are talking about someone who is young and doesn't have a high position in the society. For this reason, here we use the honorific particle she, and here we did not. With mnida and sumnida, we are showing our respect to a person we are talking to, and with she and she, we show how much we respect a person we are talking about. I hope you clearly understand now what is the difference between this honorific particle uishi and the polite formal sentence ending nida and sumnida? 
Let's take a look at how you can use this honorific particle with polite informal sentence endings. It's easy because here you also need to use just one past tense suffix, yot, for all types of verbs and adjectives. You can pause the video and try to figure out how all this works. And these examples show you how you can turn positive sentences in the past tense into negative sentences. You can do it in two different ways. Choose whichever you like. 가셨어요? 보셨어요? 바쁘셨어요? 안 가셨어요? 안 보셨어요? 안 바쁘셨어요? 가지 않으셨어요? 보지 않으셨어요? 바쁘지 않으셨어요? And so on. In the present tense, it would be 안 가셔요? 안 보셔요? 안 바쁘셔요? Or 가지 않으셔요? 보지 않으셔요? 바쁘지 않으셔요? And in the future tense, you should say 안 가시겠어요? 안 보시겠어요? 안 바쁘시겠어요? 가지 않으시겠어요? 보지 않으시겠어요? 바쁘지 않으시겠어요? There is one more alternative you can use instead of 의셔요. It's 의세요. 어디로 가세요? 우리 선생님이 아주 예쁘세요. 제 어머님께서 음악을 들으세요. 듣다, it's an irregular verb. That's why we say 들으세요 instead of 듣으세요. You will learn more about irregular verbs in a couple of lessons. Remember, 의세요 is used only in the present tense. There are several verbs in the Korean language such as 주무시다, 계시다, 드시다, 모시다, 말씀하시다, 여추다, 변찮으시다, 드리다, 돌아가시다. They are honorific variants of these verbs. Let me show you a few examples so you can understand what I mean. My friend is drinking water. 제 친구가 물을 마십니다. To say the same thing about grandfather, you need to use the honorific variant for the verb 마시다, which is 드시다. So instead of saying 제 할아버지께서 물을 마시십니다, you need to say 제 할아버지께서 물을 드십니다. Look at one more example. My brother is speaking. 제 오빠가 말합니다. Our professor is speaking. 우리 교수님이 말씀하십니다. You can actually say 말하십니다, but it would be less polite than 말씀하십니다. There are two verbs I want to draw your attention to. They are to ask somebody, 여쭈다, and to give something to somebody, 드리다. What's unique about them is usually we use honorific particles and honorific verbs to show our respect to a person we are talking about. But the verbs 여쭈다 and 드리다 are used to show our respect not to a person we are talking about, but to a person we are asking or giving something to. For example, the kid gave a book to my grandfather. 이 코마가 제 할아버지께 책을 드렸습니다. I'm talking about a kid, but I still use the honorific verb 드리다. With the verb 드리다, I'm showing my respect not to the kid, but, but to grandfather. A student asked Professor Kim. 학생이 김 교수님께 여쭈었습니다. Here we used the verb 여쭈다 to show our respect not to the student, but to professor. You might feel very confused, which is actually normal. Uh, believe me, all students get confused. And it usually takes from a few weeks to a few months to become fluent in using honorific particles and honorific verbs. You just need some practice, that's it. So the honorific particles can be used not only with verbs and adjectives, but also with nouns. Pause the video and try to find and analyze the difference between examples on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side. Here we are talking about professors and father, so I use the honorific particle she and e she, and in the sentences on the right-hand side, I'm talking about students and friends, that's why I don't need to use honorific particles. And this is a polite informal version of the same sentences. 저 분은 박 교수님이세요? 저 분은 박 교수님이 아니세요? 
저분은 제 아버지세요? 그분은 누구세요? Bun is an honorific variant for the word saram, which means a person. There are a few such words in the Korean language. When you're talking about age, home, birthday, and name of quite old people, use the words 연세, 댁, 생신, 성함, instead of 나이, 집, 생일, and 이름. And finally, the last topic for today is honorific particles 님 and 시. You can think of them as Mr. and Miss or Mrs. Okay? Look at how you can use them in the Korean language. Nim is attached to job titles and family member titles. 사장, 사장님, 매니저, 매니저님, 교수, 교수님. And these three are exceptions. Instead of 아버지님, say 아버님. Instead of 아들님, say 아드님. And instead of 달님, say 다님. You may wonder why would I show respect to children, right? I'll show you in what situations you might want to use it in a second. So the she particle is used only with names. In Korea, calling people by their name is rude. Only some category of people can call you by your name. For example, if you're a student in a university, your professor can call you by your name or he can use the honorific particle she to show some respect to you. James she, Tanaka she, Cholsu she, Helen she. Don't use this particle when you talk to people who are quite older than you, okay? It will be rude. Instead, use their job titles. Take a look at this sentence. Son of Professor Kim is 12 years old. Kim 교수님의 아드님이 12살입니다. The kid is just 12 years old, but we still use the honorific particle 님. You can say so when you're talking to a professor to show that you respect him by showing your respect to his family members. Tanaka is a Japanese student. Tanaka 씨는 일본 학생입니다. Tanaka is a Japanese last name. Japanese people avoid using first names. Also, when you use 씨, there must be a space between a person's name and the particle 씨, whereas when you use 님, you need to attach it to a noun. Foreigners find this politeness levels and honor of Hippartikus is one of the most difficult parts about the Korean language. Actually, it just looks scary, but in fact, it's easy, really. You just need some practice. This is a list of new words. I will be using them in the next lesson. Have a great day and see you next time.